Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday evening prayer time. We're so delighted to have each and every one of you that are uh, joining with us tonight. If you are signing in on one of our live streams, thank you so much for uh, just spending this hour with us, this hour of prayer, how important it is for us to be able to seek the Lord together. It's a joy to have each and every one of you, those of you that have come tonight and are here with us in the house. Thank you so much for uh, just coming here. We're here tonight just to seek the Lord. And we're, we're in day seven of our 21 days of prayer. So the first week, uh, we've, we've come through that. And now we're moving into week number two. And all week long, our emphasis has been on getting a vision for what God has. And we've looked at different things from our, our own lives, to the church, to our families, uh, to our careers, all the various aspects of what happens in our lives, how we serve. And, and throughout this week, God has really just been speaking to us and helping us to, to really focus in on the things that matter, uh, the things that enable us to be what He calls us to be. And, and so I'm so glad for that, and, I, and I'm thankful, and I, I'm thankful for everyone that has joined with us throughout this week. This has been a, uh, just been a, a unique time for us. And I know the, the first week is, is the week of, of real struggle. It's the time where you're trying to get things kind of moving in the right direction. It's, uh, if you're on the fast, it's, it's changing some things around uh, in your life. So there's been a lot I know that's been happening there. I know a lot's taken place. But I, wanna, I just want to encourage you tonight. Stay with it. Um, this is a very important Thing that you're doing because it draws you into the things of God and I know that God has something very special and very unique he wants to speak to your life so take throughout this week now as I said last week it was a vision this week we're gonna we're gonna uh, be focusing in our love so Monday will be a love for God uh, it, it, if you have the if you haven't gotten one of these little calendars uh, this is just a little card placard to help you each day Put it on your refrigerator, but it just kind of gives you the focus and the attention of what we'll be doing throughout the, this coming week. So looking forward to that. Tonight I'm very excited uh, to have uh, our prayer uh, leader tonight, Sister Marlene Hine. She's going to be coming tonight. Our prayer focus is on a vision for the nation. The nation, that we, as you know, we are in critical moments. Uh, there's a lot happening in our nation right now. And we really need to hear from the Lord and to really get a vision for what God has for us. So I'm excited about having Marlene here tonight. So Marlene, I'm going to ask you to come, and you're going to lead, she's going to lead us in a time of the Word, and then take us into prayer. Amen, Sister Marlene. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be here with you guys tonight. And our prayer focus again is 2 Chronicles 7.14. And as a nation, we are marching towards our promised land, uh, journeying to this promise. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And last time I spoke with you guys, I spoke concerning this exact same scripture and said there were four things God asks of us first. And that was humble, pray, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. Then his response to us was going to be that he would hear us, forgive us, and heal our land. And I believe now is that time that our cries to the Lord will cause massive change and intervention because the Lord desires to deliver us to that promised land. Amen. We have begun to humble ourselves and seek his face, and God is going to heal our land. Does not mean the battle has not been fierce. It has been long, and most days it feels like it is never ending. Some days it feels like it's one step forward and two steps back. Yet we continue to march in unity, standing in faith, declaring the word of God over our nation, taking our nation back one step at a time. I hear more reports, reports of believers growing weary from the fight, and that shouldn't come as a surprise to us because it's the enemy's job to weary us in this hour. And how do we remain strong and diligent in this journey? 
How do we maintain enough strength to not only keep marching in the faith, but also to enter in the promised land with a shout on our lips and a dance in our step? There's three keys I'm going to give you. And the first one is we must believe the report of the Lord. That's a big song we used to sing here. Whose report are you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. How about you guys? Amen? Numbers 14, 6 through 9 says, But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephana, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And we're all familiar with this story of the children of Israel were marching toward the promised land, one which God told them to possess. Moses sent the ten spies in and to see what kind of land it was and what they were up against. And when they saw the giants, the first thought was to return back to Egypt, to a place of bondage. That we do not want to do. Except for two of the spies, only two believe the report of the Lord, and the Bible says these two had a different kind of spirit. If we are to arrive to our destination, to the fulfillment of seven, Second Chronicles 7.14, we must believe the report of the Lord. Not the news media, not social media, and most of the times we can't even believe our friends and our family because they're inundated with what they're listening to on, on the news and social media. We must believe only what God has said about our situation. He said, if we humble ourselves, if we seek his face and we turn, he will heal our land. We must rest assured that it is that he is a faithful God. We have humbled ourselves, and there are more praying today than ever before. And it is certain, go with go, he will fulfill his promise and heal our land. The word of God tells us to call those things that are not as though they are. We must begin to declare that God has healed our land. Righteousness prevails, and God has fulfilled his promises to our nation and to our families. A lot of times when Mark comes home and I've gone to see the kids, he'll say, so how was it? And I say, do you want the seen or the unseen version? And it's not easy a lot of times to speak those things that aren't as though they are. And during this time, when we're seeing upheaval like never before, and we're seeing, I mean, Sherry was just walking through the door, and she's like, just telling me, <laughs> there's so much attack going on. And there is. But the word of God is what is going to sustain us during this time. And we must speak the word of God against every situation that the enemy is throwing our way. The second key is don't waste your energy on the crows. The only bird that, that dares to peck at an eagle is a crow. He sits on the eagle's back and he bites at his neck. However, the eagle does not respond. He doesn't waste his time or his energy fighting with that crow. He has a better plan. He simply opens his big wings up and he begins to rise higher and higher. And the higher he goes the harder it is for the crow to, to breathe. Eventually, that crow falls off due to the lack of the energy, of oxygen. Do not waste your strength trying to fight off crows in your life. Simply rise higher in God. Jesus said to John in the book of Revelation, come up here. In Isaiah 61, it says, arise and shine. Is it always easy? No. No. And it as I was studying, it took me back to the time when Mark, the, door, the Lord opened the door for Mark to work where he's working now. And it was completely the Lord. I, we know it was the Lord. He was working where he was at. He wasn't looking for new employment. But my old Sunday school teacher, when we were kids here, came to where I was working and asked for Mark's um, resume. And I gave it to him. And they hired Mark right away. They doubled his salary. They, at that time, we had lost everything. We lost our home. We lost our cars. We lost everything. And um, so 
where we where he was working, it was just you know simple job. Actually, Sister Lisa helped him get it, and then he worked there for a couple years, and then this job came along, and it was the Lord. They almost tripled his salary. Well, anyway, the Lord opened this door, and no sooner he got through the door, um, heavy stress came with this job, and. Within two or three months, Mark suffered two, two seizures because of the stress of the job because there's no, I mean, there's no, he doesn't, there's no seizures in his family. Um, and they continued to shift them all over to the different plants. There was three plants, and so they would make him travel. And he wasn't really sharing the stress with me. I, 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 when he had the seizures, I thought he was having a heart attack because I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, he's having a heart attack. So it was seizures and all this other stuff, and he kept going through his job and stuff, and, and so um, they start, he started sharing he was going through stress. Well, then he began to rely upon alcohol, and he started drinking pretty heavily on the job. It got to where his boss would tell him, you smell like alcohol, and they don't care there because that's what they all do. And so then, anyway, he began to get um, later, years later, I mean, here up to recently, um, they started writing him up. He would be written up for things. He wasn't even, he'd be on vacation, and he started getting written up. And he would come home, and I'm like, you just got, you know, I would tell him, you just got to pray. He'd cuss me out because he did not want to hear that. And um, I just felt like God was trying to do a humbling process for him, but Everything he was doing, it was just knocking him down. Did it matter? And I thought, God, you gave him this job. Why is everything going south? It just was going south. So he said he could tell immediately that he had lost the favor of the Lord with the things that started occurring in his life. He began to lose wages. Uh, I mean, you name it. Everything that could go wrong started going wrong. There was a stack of... Um, write-ups in his file, and they, they told him twice that if there was one more write-up, he was going to lose his job. And he told them, you guys didn't give me this job, and you guys can't take it away. And he would tell them that all the time. And they would tell him, oh, okay, you're God this, you're God that, while he had booze on his breath. So I, I just kept praying, and I kept telling the Lord, I, I finally just stopped telling him, you got to pray, you got to do this, or whatever. And finally, the Lord began to deal with him, and he surrendered whatever he had to do. He surrendered, gave up what he was doing, and literally, God flipped the script in his life. They got rid of all his files. There is nothing in his file. He is got, it's like favor had come back on his life. And God completely turned everything around on his job again. He's the last guy standing. He has no negative remarks on his job. And so I knew God was, God was taking him through a humbling process. God was, using, God was trying to elevate him, but God was also using it to humble him in a different manner as well. I've never seen such a big man cry the way that he cried. He would come home in tears like I've never seen before. But when you don't do what God has asked you to do, he has a way of humbling you. And he humbled him. The process he went through was just unbelievable. Today, the favor of the Lord is upon this guy's life like I've never seen. God totally flipped the script on his life because he decided to yield and allow the Lord to take full reign on his life. So God, is, he is soaring like the eagle he's supposed to soar now. So when you yield to the Lord and allow the Lord to lead you, I mean, but there are, there are a lot of crows still pecking, but they can't. <laughs> they can't win. So um, anyway, uh, let me see where I'm at here. Hold on one second. Okay, so there was a um, pastor, Eddie, our youth pastor, used to tell us too, he preached a good message one time, and he said that there are four types of people in your life. There are either multipliers, 
people who will add, subtract, and divide, and which type are in your corner. So that you have to remember as well while you're going through this prom uh, promise of, uh, the pro to the promised land. The third key is you need daily manna. And in this season, we must think back to God's daily promises of manna as the Israelites journeyed to the promised land. God rained down manna once a day for the nourishment and strength of his people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day. And I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And that's Exodus 14.4. This daily provision came with strict instructions. They could only gather enough for each member of their family, no more and no less. They also had to gather manna each and every day, except for the Sabbath. It was daily manna. I believe God is saying the same thing to us on this journey into the fulfillment of our promise for our nation and our families. It is the word of the living God. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. And it's the word of God. It's just as Pastor spoke this morning. We can't just come Sunday and think it sustains us for the rest of the week. It's every single day the word of God. And another little testimony I have is I used to not be able to sleep at night and I went, through, well, for some that know, I had a very traumatic childhood, and I was restless. And of course, the first thing you do, doctors want to do is slap pills on you. They want to give you sleeping pills. And my doctor would put me on antidepressants and sleeping pills for years. Well, I'm not a pill person, and I hate taking pills, but I resorted to it because then, of course, I went through severe shoulder surgery. And... I was so frustrated when I said, God, I don't believe this is what you want me to be doing. This is not what you want for my life. So I got off of them, and I started going through the scriptures and pulling out every healing scripture that I could possibly find. And I started taking a daily dose of the scripture. And I began to quote the scriptures. I began to write them down and take it every single day. And I just shared with Pastor the other day, they gave me a sleep study, and I have no sleep apnea. I sleep through the night. And I don't take any kind of medication. It's a miracle for me because for years, I literally could not sleep. When my mother passed away, my sister and I slept together. We stayed there. And she said, what's wrong with you? Because I would flip so hard to sleep. She said, it's like you're fighting in your sleep. And I, I guess I didn't know that, but I guess I did. But God literally, I would be so aggravated because I'd be up all hours of the night. And I would take it as, well, God wants me to pray. I guess, you know, that's what I'll do, so I'll pray. But I rest so good now, and I sleep throughout the night without getting up. And sometimes we think right away, I better go to the doctor, it's, and all they're going to do is slap you with pills. And it's literally, I got in the word of God. And the word of God is for everything in our life, literally everything, for our kids, for our, I mean, our health, for our jobs, for our relationships, our marriages, everything. All we need is the word of God. It speaks life into the atmosphere, literally life. So that's what I have for you tonight. And I'm going to have um, Mark start off with our prayer for this scriptures on Second Chronicles uh, 7.14. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this evening, God. We just give you the praise and the honor, Lord, for all your love and your grace and your mercy to us, Lord. Lord, I pray tonight, God, that you would just look at our hearts, God, and help us, Lord, to lean upon your word, God, and, and let us be that church and that people, God, that will humble themselves before you, Lord, so that, God, that we can have everything that we need, Lord, to go out into the world, God, and, and be that people, Lord, because, God, that is the desire of, of our heart, Lord, is to do your work, God. So tonight, Lord, we just pray, God, that you would give us, Lord, the insight that we need, God. Give us, Lord, you said you did not give us a spirit of fear, God. So I pray, God, tonight that you would just, Lord, let your people know that tonight that, God, that there is nothing that we cannot accomplish, Lord. 
that we put you first, God, and that you, God, will make straight the crooked paths that lay before us, God. So tonight, God, I pray, Lord, just let your Holy Spirit come down now and encamp about us, Lord. And God, just help us get through these tumultuous times that we're seeing, God, because we know we cannot make it without your Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, we just pray, God, that you would just protect your people, Lord. Lord, put your hedge of protection up over this church, God, and put it up over each and every individual, God, as we lean upon your scriptures, God, and we strive to do those things that are right, God. And we will forever give you the glory and the praise for it, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the word tonight, God, because you, your word says it will not return void into our lives, God. So we lean upon that word tonight, God. We put it in our hearts, Lord. And that, Lord Jesus, we give you praise for we just give you the honor for it, and we invite your Holy Spirit to come into this place tonight. Just begin to encamp on, around us, God. Let us feel your presence, God. We invite you, God. We want you to fill us, God, with your Holy Spirit so that, Lord, you can strengthen us, Lord, because we get weak, God, and we feel, Lord Jesus, that there's no hope, God, that we feel like there's nothing out there that we can do to change circumstances, but you said in your word that if we would just humble ourselves, God. So tonight we humble ourselves, Lord. And we, Lord Jesus, just need your presence so much. And we just give you the glory and the praise for it, God. We just praise, praise your holy name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Just, Lord, just encamp us tonight, God. Let us feel your presence, Lord, because, Lord, we are nothing without you, God. We just praise your name tonight, Lord. We just give you all the glory and the honor, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Father God, we come before you tonight. Humble ourselves, Lord God, before you. Lord, we are not worthy of you and everything that you have done for us, the presence you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we have rough times. Yes, we all have our Job moments. But Lord God, you have told us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. When we're down, Lord God, we know that we can come back because you are there to wrap your arms around us and just say, I love you. God, there's nothing like that. Nothing that moves and touches the heart like that. Lord, just to know that you're there that you care. Lord God, in all the crazy things that go on in these lives, in this world, Lord God, in this city, in this country, Lord, we know that we can go to you. Lord, that you're going to turn things around. Lord, because we believe in you, we put our trust in you. Lord God, and, and we look for that peace that comes from you. Lord, in our families, Lord, that they would see, Lord, that salvation is the thing that is needed to turn us around. Lord, because it is all about you, Lord, we ask that you move in this city, in this country, Lord, how control has been lost, that people are just acting on what they feel, Lord God. It's not about you like this country was founded upon, Lord God, but we're just doing our own thing. We need to turn back to you, Lord, to repent, Lord God, and just look to you. Oh, Lord God, because we are kids of the King, and there's nothing like that. Lord, everything in there is so rewarding. Lord, it touches me right here. It hurts me, Lord God, to realize that we've failed you so many times, over and over. Lord God, but we look back to you. Ask for your forgiveness, Lord God, that you would touch us 
that you would draw us back to you, Lord God, that we would be examples as we go out into our daily lives. Lord, that these towns, the jobs, as we go to those, Lord God, people will see something in us and say, that one's different. That's because it comes from the Father. Lord God, and we just ask that you touch this country, you turn it around, touch our politicians, Lord God. Let them look to you for these things that have meaning on our lives. Lord God, we just look to you in all things, and we will give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture of Second Chronicles, it is so hard now. It, it, it runs so deep in this time that we're living. Lord, help me. Back in November, and, and only my wife knows about this. I, I, didn't, I haven't spoke these words with nobody. But I believe this is important. Back in November, in my prayer time, during the, uh, the elections, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he says to me that, he said, my people has messed up this whole process. We, we, we have screwed this up. He said that the instruction for the church back in September was to pray. That was the only thing that we were supposed to do, was to pray back in September. And what we have done is we create our own ways and our own agenda. And when we thought that God was going right, including myself, I thought God was going right, he went left. Because the instruction back in September was for the church to pray. Not to, not to go out, social media, in the internet, with our brothers and sisters, friends and family, to talk about politics. That, 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 was, not, that was not the instruction. The instruction was for the church, for the people of God, to pray and to humble ourselves. And thank God, thank God, the second chronicle is direct to us, the people of God. And we had a chance, we got a chance right now to humble ourselves and to follow the scripture, to seek God so that God can heal our land. The instruction back in September are still the instructions today, especially this moment. That's why we're here right now. That's why the church called, God called the church for 21 days of fast and prayer for a reason. This is not coincident. This is not coincident that everything that's going on out there is happening. This, 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 this is a reason why we're praying fast for 21 days. You know? When the men of God when, when God gave a word to the man of God, for the man of God to speak to us, that word is for us to follow. Once we follow that word, we come in one accord. And that's how God can heal our land. That Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, is for the people of God first to humble themselves, to seek God so that he can heal our land. And I do believe he will heal our land. I do believe it. I do believe in the word of God. So let's do it today. Let's humble ourselves. Let's give God a chance to heal our land. But we got to seek him first. So God, we thank you 
for your word, Lord God. We know, Lord God, and believe with our heart, Lord Jesus, God, that you have calling us, Lord God, to seek your face first, Lord God, to humble ourselves, Lord God. I believe, God, with all my heart, Lord Jesus, that you, God, want to do the things that you say you were going to do, Lord God. There is nothing, Lord God. There is nothing impossible for you. There is a lot of noise out there, Lord God. Things are shifting, Lord God, left and right, Lord God. But you still, Lord God, you still right in the center, Lord God, waiting for us, waiting for you people, Lord God, to come to you, to seek your face, to humble themselves, Lord God. So tonight, Lord God, tonight we pray, Lord God, we're asking you, Lord God, give us a chance to humble ourselves, Lord God. We pray, God, that you, Lord God, do the impossible, Lord God. Do the things, Lord God, that we cannot do, Lord God. Lord God, we believe in you, we trust in you, Lord God, but more importantly, Lord God, we want to depend on you, Lord. Lord God, I'm asking you, Lord God, that you forgive us, Lord. Lord God, forgive our pride, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for, for our disobedience, Lord Jesus, God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, and I'm asking you, Lord God, for my brothers and sisters, Lord God, that you help us, Lord God. Bring us back to you, Lord God. Bring us back, Lord God, to, to the prayer life, Lord God, that we're intended to have, Lord God. Lord God, I'm asking you, Lord God, that you strengthen us, Lord God. Please, Lord, don't let the noise in the outside, Lord God. Intervene with what you're doing here in this house, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to stay focused, Lord God, in what you're doing in our house, Lord God. This is what matters, Lord God. Lord God, this is what matters, Lord God. This is a good soil right here, Lord. And what you're doing here, Lord God, it matters, Lord God. So we asking you, Lord God, that you strengthen us, Lord God. Fix our eyes, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to seek you, Lord. Lord God, we can do all things through you, Lord God. We believe that, Lord God. We stand there, Lord God. So we're just asking, God, that you guide us, that you lead us, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to anointing the man of God, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, a special prayer for his life, Lord God, for his family, Lord God, for his children, his children's children, Lord God. I pray, God, that you strengthen him, Lord Jesus, God. I pray, God, that you continue to speak to him, Lord God. Lord God, lead him as he lead his church, Lord God. Lord God, and we thought we give you the honor. And we give you the praise. And you might in there we pray. Amen. Just thank you, Jesus. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord? Would you just praise him right where you are right now? Just praise him. Father, I thank you today. God, I thank you that you're speaking life, God, over this church. Oh, God. I couldn't help but think of that, that imagery that Sister Marlene was sharing about the eagle and the crow pecking at his neck. And that the eagle just kept on flying and just keeps flying and keeps flying and just spreads his wings and, and begins to fly higher and higher and higher. I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, but I've, I've kind of felt like that that's exactly how it's been here of late. Seems like the enemy has just been pecking at the church. He gets so, I get so annoyed <laughs> at the enemy. I get so annoyed at the things. But God, I want to thank you tonight that your church, God, rises. God, you said in your word to rise and shine, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon us. I received a, a message from my wife's aunt this past week. It was a word that the Lord gave to her while she was in prayer. And I trust my wife's aunt. She's a woman of prayer. She's an intercessor, and she's a woman who has a heart for God. And I just, 
I just want to read, I asked her if I could read this because I felt like it was something, especially in the circumstances, and, and, I, and I want you to understand something. I get, I get really perturbed at people when they think that the church is being too political or that we're not allowed to talk about things that are going on in our nation. And I've always said that the only way that we really need, the way that we speak about the things happening in our nation is when we talk about them through the lens of the Word of God. Because you see, the Word of God speaks about what we're dealing with right now and where we are and where we're headed. And I really believe that. I believe God has a word for his people. And, I, and this, just listen to the, some of this that, she, that she, the Lord gave to her. This was, uh, it says, just as there was void, chaos, and disorder in the beginning, so it is now in this country that I've formed. I see it. I knew it. I knew when the seed was started, with whom, and seen it grow. It is by the enemy's hand, his minions fed, it using people's hearts that have grown cold. They are hearts of stone. There's no penetration into their intent of their heart to destroy. I once knew a man named Trump. When I raised up, that I raised up, to answer the clarion call of trumpeting my voice. He was a young boy. He answered. He grew in stature in mind and in heart, was in love with my country. His hands are clean toward her. He gave and did not take, so I prospered him. He has failed at times, but his heart, Mind and hands I could use. So I anointed him to lead a cause that was dear to me, the rescue of a nation that I formed and loved. He answered, although he had no need to do so, except that he loved her with a true and was true to her. He also loved my nation Israel and cared for her. He was an instrument that I, call, I used to fulfill what my prophets spoke so long ago. Do you now think that I will abandon him and the prophets that have been loyal to me, fearless? No. And I know you don't think so. Just give me some more time. My using their mouth, the evil ones, to hang themselves is not yet complete. I'm going to let them vomit a little more longer. It's a putrid smell to me, a stench to the earth. But just as the earth was void in the beginning, when we, the Trinity, hovered over it and then spoke, there was order. You just wait to see. You just wait to see. Keep praying. Keep speaking. Keep prophesying. Keep declaring and decreeing, it's coming. It's coming. And what I do believe is very clear. If we do what Second Chronicles 7.14 says, God, it is imperative that your church humble themselves. There is only one hope for our nation, and that's you. Our hope, God, is not found in men. Our hope, Lord, is not found in an institution. Our hope, God, is not found in a, in a political party. Our hope, God, is found in you. And Father, because it is you, you, God, have the ability to change things before us. God, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds our tomorrow. We don't know what will happen, Lord, over the next few days, but we know, God, that everything, God, that's going on does not take you by surprise. We might be surprised by it. God, it may catch us off guard. We may be completely unaware, Lord, of what's going on, but nothing, Lord, ever 
God goes unnoticed by you. You are our God. And you know, Lord, what we have need of even before we pray. And yet, God, you said to us to ask you. Lord, you said that if we ask for the nations, you'd give them to us. God, you said that if we would ask you to heal, you would heal. You said, God, that if we would ask you to supply, you would supply. God, you told us that if we would abide in you and the word abide in us, then we could ask anything in your name and you'd do it. And so, God, we as a church come here tonight, God, for that very purpose. We seek you, God, for a vision for our nation. God, not a vision for a political party, not a vision for a particular man, but a vision, God, of what you desire for this nation to be. God, there's no doubt that you have a plan. And I know, God, that there are many skeptics out there, many, Lord, who do not believe, God, what your word declares, nor do they believe, Lord, that this nation was founded on the principles of your word. But, God, we as your people, we know it was. And we know, God, that you have a plan and a purpose. And, God, I believe, Lord, that no matter what we have happen, whatever takes place, God, over the next few years, the truth of the matter is this. You desire to revive the land. You desire to revive your people. You desire, God, to bring about change in the hearts of families, men and women, sons and daughters. Your word says, God, clearly that you'll draw the hearts of sons toward their fathers and the fathers' hearts toward their sons. And God, I believe that that God is real. And I believe what your word says is true. And I believe, God, that it's time for the church to rise. God, it's a time for an awakening, God, like never before. Lord, you've been shaking the land. You said, God, those things that will be shaken will be shaken. God, I believe that with all of my heart. And so, God, I'm asking you tonight, Lord, that you will shake us, God, to the very core of our spirit, man. And let us, God, never again, Lord God, be satisfied. And let us not, God, just take words we hear lightly. But God, let us, Lord, weigh them, God, through the Scripture. Let us weigh them out by what the Word declares to us. And let us, God, as your people, stand upon the foundation of the Word of the Lord. Because you said, God, if we would humble ourselves and pray and seek your face, and turn from our wicked ways, that God, you would heal this land. And God, you said that you would save us from our sin. And then you said, God, I, I know you said, God, that if we would seek you with all of our heart. See, God, sometimes we're asking other people to do the praying for us. And God, that's not going to get the job done. God, no one can pray for my family like I can pray for my family. And no one, God, can see things about my home like I see it. And no one knows the things that go on in my life, but I do. And God, I know, God, that it's up to me, Lord, to seek you. It's up to each and every one of us. If revival, God, comes on this land, it comes because men and women humble their heart before you. It comes because we decided that we don't want business as usual anymore. We have decided that we're not interested in going our own way, but God, we desire to go your way, to seek your face, to call upon your name. God, to believe that your word is true. And God, that no matter who is in the White House, God, we have to realize, Lord, that you desire to touch our house. And God, that the glory of your presence, God, begins, Lord, in the hearts of people who, God, are willing to humble their heart before you. And God, that no matter what happens, God, from this point forward, the truth is, God, everything that takes place, takes place because you're in charge. Because, God, you set up and you put down. You raise up and you put down. And everything, God, has purpose behind it. And, Lord, just like you did for Daniel, Lord God, who prayed three times a day, and he set his face, God, toward you. And, God, he, no matter what happened, even when they said he couldn't do it anymore, he disregarded the laws of man, and he set his face to pray. God, it cost him something. God, it may cost your people something. They may have to stand. They may have to go through things. They may have to deal. But here's the thing, God, I believe. Lord, if we have committed our heart to the truth of your word, if we've committed ourselves to follow after you, then God, no matter what the enemy tries to do against your people, 
God the ultimate is, God, we will be on the winning side. We will see your glory. We will see your power made manifest. We will see men drawn from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We will see the greatest outpouring of your spirit, God, over this land that we've never, like we've never seen before. A final great awakening, God, is happening right now. We are the move of God in this land right now. You've raised up your people for now, God. It's, we can't put it off to another time. We can't put it off to another generation. We can't put it off to another place. It's now, God, that you've called us. Now's the time. Now's the day. Today's the day of salvation. Today's the day, God, where your Holy Spirit is moving across the land. Today's the day, God, that you're going into the highways and the byways. Today, God, is the day when you're going out into the gutters, Lord, and you're pulling people back out of the darkness and bringing them into the marvelous light. Today's that day. God, you're using your church today, God. This is that moment. This is that time. God, I believe with all of my heart God, that if we as your people, God, will see it, God, get a vision again of what you want for our nation. That we get a vision again, God, of what you desire for your church. We get a vision again, God, of what you want for our families. We get a vision again, God, for how we need to serve. If we get a vision again, God, for what it is you've called us to do and to be, then God, we will step forth and God, we will do it with everything within us. And God, the gates of hell cannot prevail against your church. God, I believe that with all of my heart. And I believe, God, now is that time. Church, now is the time. If you believe that, I want you right now, those of you that are with us, those of you watching us, I want you just to praise God. I want you to say, God, now is the time. I rise to the occasion, God. I rise to it, Lord. I rise to the call. I hear the clarion call. I will rise to it, God. I will do it. I will not be defeated. I will not allow the things that I've heard, the things that I've seen to keep me away, God, from what I know you called me to do and what you've called me to be. Lord God, the only time, the only time we know it's going to be over is when you say it's over. God, when you blow the trumpet sound, and God, when that last trump, God, goes off, Lord, and your church is, God, taken from this place, Lord, God, we know, Lord, our journey is over. But until then, God, as long as there is breath within us, as long as there's energy and time, God, that we have, we're going to use, God, we're going we're to redeem the time, Lord. That's what we're going to do. Because that, God, is what you've called us to do in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Shotele la Baka Shatara Rabba, Seti de Manon Gokotiate. Rete la Basara da Bakoshudi da la Masanda da Bakila la Masuri Abasataya. Oh, yes, Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives. We cannot be silent. We cannot be silenced. We will not be silent. We will not. God, we will speak. When you say speak, we'll speak. When you say go, we'll go. God, we'll do what you ask of us to do. In the name of Jesus, we'll do it. Because that, God, is what you've done. You've called us, God, for such a time as this. Do you understand? You could have been in any other season. You could have been born. You could have been raised. You could be an adult person. You could be a child or a young person. You could have been of any other generation. But God chose you of this generation. You are chosen for this time. You are chosen for this moment. You are chosen to do what God wants you to do for this season of life. And this is where we are. As long as we have breath within us. We are going to make that declaration known and we're going to speak the word of life over the death that the enemy's trying to bring. See, I believe God has put resurrection power in each of us. Amen. And I believe the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that lives in each and every one of us who are called by the name of the Lord. Amen. In fact, I believe it so strongly that I believe that when we pray, we can pray for the needs of others. And the Bible says that God will not only hear us, but he'll answer and he'll bring, he'll bring about change. Amen. 
So right now I'm going to ask you if you'll draw your attention to the, to the screen and look and see those who are in need right now. And I'm going to ask you, if you will, if you'll just begin to call on the name of the Lord in their behalf. God, we come right now, God, believing, Lord, that you can move, God, upon these before us. And Father, I ask you right now, Lord, Greg's mom is in the hospital and the doctors, God, have given very little hope, God, for anything to change. But God, your word, God, has been sent to heal. So God, I pray right now that you will move, Lord, upon the need right now. You know exactly what to do here, God, and we're trusting you, Lord. God, we know, God, that she's in your care and she's in your hands. And God, we're believing for that. God, we believe that for Sister Louise Scott right now. Lord, that you will just move upon her and continue, God, to strengthen her right now. God, we want to thank you, Lord, that Sister Shante's mom has gone home. God, she's no longer in the hospital. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing her through this one more time. God, thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. God, we just praise you for it right now. We pray, God, for Mary Fox, God, and for Lisa, God. We just ask you to move. God, for Tony Banks, Lord, this young man, God, that needs a touch, God, in his life. We pray, God, for Sister Veronica, Lord, that you touch her life. And God, we pray for her friend right now. Lord, God, there are things happening there, Lord, that, they, that, that are beyond our understanding. I pray for the peace of God to come over that home right now, that family, in Jesus' name. I pray, God, for the Delbury family, God, that the peace of God will just come over them right now. Lord God, that you will work, God, your work in their lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, I ask you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. God, for Ramon Sanchez and their family right now, as they go through this loss, Lord, that they've experienced. I pray, God, that you will just be with them, and God, that you will give them strength, and God, gird them up about with the Holy Spirit. Give them words, God, that will speak life, Lord, in the midst of all that's going on, God. I pray, Lord, that in the midst of the chaos, you, God, will just speak peace, Lord, in this situation, we pray in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that you will reach down upon uh, Brother Jimmy Lindsay, Lord, and their family right now. God, I pray that you will be with them, Lord, as they've traveled, God, to Kentucky, Lord, to deal with a funeral. God, I pray that you will be with them, Lord, and that you will just comfort their hearts, lift them up. God, we ask, God, for Cindy, Lord, just continue, God, to give her strength, God, to deal, Lord, with the things, God, of her father's affairs and with her mom. God, we pray that you will just be with her and help her, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God, for we ask you, Lord, for Sister Sherry's aunt, Judy, God, right now, oh, that you would move, Lord, upon that need. God, we know you're able. God, we're believing for it. God, touch Sister Pat, God. Let your healing virtue flow over her life. God, for Tammy, Lord, the things that she's going through, God, and for her mom and for her brother. Father, we just ask you just to reach down and God, continue to move, Lord, in their behalf. We pray, God, for Sister Eva's friend Tammy and Jeff, God, move upon them. God, for Global Hope Ministries, Father, we pray, God, God, touch our missionaries. Lord, you're going out, God. They're out there, Lord, doing the work day by day by day. And God, they struggle, Lord, and things are going on. And Lord, under the situations, God, that they're that meet their needs, God, I pray, and move upon them. God, we ask you, Lord, that you just reach down upon Mary's sister, God, that you would move on her life, God, we pray. God, for Sister Carol Martin, Lord, we ask you, God, just to reach down upon Jason, Lord. God, we call upon you, Lord, for his healing. God, for Virginia right now, Lord, we just ask you, God, just to have your way. Move, Lord God, upon her life. God, we pray for Shepherd tonight. God, this one has had a stroke. We're praying, God, for healing, God, that you would just speak life, Lord, in this right now and touch that family. God, I pray words of life, God, to come into them right now, Lord. We pray, God, for Matt, Lord, and his family right now for his Aunt Lynn and his Uncle David, Lord, and his Uncle JP and their family. We pray, God, that you will move. Oh, Lord, that you would just touch them. God, we know that nothing is impossible with you. God, we pray for Xavier right now. Lord, we ask you, God, to touch this little guy. Lord, we don't know what's going on with him, but God, we know that you see. 
You know how. God, you know what to do. God, I pray for Alvin and Chelsea, Lord God. There's nothing more turbulent, God, to deal with. God, when you have a little guy, Lord God, that doesn't know, Lord, what's going on. So I pray, God, that you will just speak life, God. I pray your healing power, God, will move, Lord, over him right now. God, in the name of Jesus, that you will speak, God. Oh, yes, Lord God, touch Sister Ruby tonight, we pray. Lord God, just move upon her life. God, we ask you, God, to touch. God, you know how. Lord, this is one of our dear saints. And we're praying, God, that you will move upon her, Lord. God, that you just touch her and raise her up. Father, we pray for Reba right now. And God, that family, Lord, we ask you, God, that you will just move upon them. Touch her husband, God, and her family. And God, that we know, Lord, God, whatever the need is, God, that you know how. Lord, God, we believe, God, in healing. We believe, God, that your word says that with your stripes we're made whole. And God, that you, God, change everything in a moment. Lord God, whatever the enemy's meant for evil, you turn it around and make it good. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God will give you the glory for it right now. And we'll give you the praise. Would you do that right now, church? Would you just praise God? Just praise Him. Praise Him because you know He's able. Praise Him because He hears and answers. Praise Him because you know that nothing's impossible with God. Praise Him because you know that He is going to move in spite of everything going on in the world right now. He's still God. He's still on the throne. He still has the power. He still knows exactly what to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I give you the glory. I give you all the praise. I magnify your name. I glorify your name, Lord. Because I know, God, you know exactly what to do in our lives. You know exactly how, God, to move. And I believe, God, that, Lord, we don't have to be discouraged about tomorrow. Because we know you hold our tomorrow. We don't have to be fretting over the things that are happening before us because we can trust you, God. Your word says you order our steps. The Holy Spirit leads us everywhere we go. And God, because we have the comfort of the Holy Spirit, God, we can comfort others who need comforting. Because, God, we understand what that's like. We know, Lord. I pray, God, let us, God, speak words that will lift people up throughout this week. I pray, God, that as we come back together tomorrow evening, Lord, we'll come back, God, ready to receive the word and, God, ready to seek your face. And, God, to testify of the good things, Lord, that you're doing. I pray, God, that you will be with your people when they go on their jobs. I pray, God, that you will watch over them throughout the week, God. I pray that you will help them, Lord, to always be at attentive, God, to the word of the Lord. And God, that Lord, as they seek you, God, God, they'll find exactly what they're looking for in you. Father, I pray, Lord, that they'll recognize, Lord, that you, God, love them with an everlasting love. You love their children. You love their homes. God, you love them. And God, that you're the supplier of everything in their life. And God, that when we walk in obedience to your word, Lord God, all things are possible. I thank you, God, that we can stay under your authority. And God, by doing so, Lord, we don't have to be tossed to and fro by every wind and wave, by every doctrine of man. But God, that we can stand secure in you. You're the foundation on which we stand. And for that, I praise you and I thank you and give you the glory and I give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I just can't get that image out of my head, Sister Marlene, of that eagle rising higher with that crow sitting on the back of his head. I love that. Man, that just, just thinking, man, the higher you go in God, the less the devil can peck at you. <laughs> and that's, that, that's the way it ought to be, amen? Well, I want to thank you for joining with us tonight. I want to thank Marlene and those who came tonight to pray. I praise God for our men Amen. Men of God that stand in the gap, make up the hedge. I praise God for that. Amen. There, there's something that happens when men pray. And I'm just so thankful for it. I'm glad that, that we don't have to just rely on not, no, no disrespect to our women because our women are prayer warriors. Trust me. Amen. If you heard Sister Lupe pray this morning, you know what we're talking about. 
But I'll tell you what, it's always good to hear men of God pray and seek the Lord. So I want to thank you again for being with us tonight. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coming and being a part of it. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. If you want to know more about Jubilee Worship Center, go to jubileeworshipcenter.com. We'd love to hear from you. On that website, you can find all of our previous services, all of our prayer times. And also, if you have a podcast, we have podcasts going out now. We're, we're just, we just started last week uh, podcasting our prayer time. So if you're in your car and you just uh, want to hear prayer, you want to be uh, just join with us in prayer, uh, you can go there and you can just upload the podcast uh, Jubilee Worship Center. So we're, we're looking forward to what God's got. Look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you and have a great night. Amen.